the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there's this very successful guy and everything's going well for him until he starts feeling a little less than his usual self. And it doesn't go away. Pretty much constant nausea and some balance problems start creeping in to dominate his day and then the piercing pains in his head begin. After many tests, he and his wife end up in a well-regarded specialist's office who delivers the news that they've been dreading. You have a brain tumor and a very difficult surgery is the first step we have to take. Honestly, there's a chance you may not survive the operation, but if you do, chemo comes next and the prognosis is pretty good. So they step into that abyss together, trusting the hands of the specialist. It's some 25 years later and life is good. He gets checked out every so often, but he's been clean now for a long time. He's so thankful for the life that was returned to him. And then his wife reads in the paper that the doctor who'd returned it to him has died just the next town over. And she suggests that they should go to his funeral. That seems a fitting thing to do, considering what he'd given them both. But her husband replies, Honey, I'd like to, but I've got a golf game scheduled with the boys that day, and I wouldn't want to disappoint them. So they don't. Sometimes it seems gratitude only goes so far. Well, today the scriptures gives us an example of gratitude, of people who recognize the gift that they've been given and respond with thanks and gratitude. Naaman must have been at his wit's end, at the very end of his chain with little hope left. Why else would a powerful pagan general come to a Jewish prophet and submit to his instructions to plunge himself into the river Jordan, not once, but seven times? And what's his life-changing reaction to his life-changing cure? He acknowledges his new lease on life has come from the one true God of the Jews, and he will worship only him from now on. Thanks and gratitude. Again, in the gospel, leprosy rears its ugly head, but now it's multiplied tenfold. Back then, leprosy was kind of like the Ebola of its day. If you had even the inkling of it, you were done for. Pushed out of your community and away from your family and loved ones who might or might not help you, but from a very safe distance. You lived with similar poor souls as your body dissolved and you declared your pain by announcing yourself as unclean, unclean, anywhere you went so others would avoid you. So these ten lepers, perhaps with a faith born out of their desperate situation, cry out to our Lord today, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. It's interesting that he doesn't cure them on the spot. So many of his other miracles happen that way. Instead, he tests their faith by telling them all to go and show themselves to the priests. So they go. Can you just imagine these ten as they make their way to an unknown conclusion, trusting and knowing that Jesus has commanded them to do this? So was their cure gradual and with a growing excitement of the physical and spiritual changes that they could see happening to each other as they went? Did it quicken their journey toward the priests, each step bringing more wonder and joy? We just don't know. All we do know is that as they were going, they were cleansed. And the priests must have confirmed this tenfold miracle because nine of them aren't heard from again. Surely they immediately returned to their families and their loved ones, joyfully celebrating the new life that God had given them. But one of them, a Samaritan and a pagan by Jewish custom, returns and falls at the feet of Jesus in thankful gratitude. Folks in both the Old Testament and in our Gospel notice that it's the foreigner, the pagan, who humbles himself before God and thanks and in gratitude for the healing that they've received. So perhaps there's something in these stories and particularly the Gospel for us to think about. Have we perhaps become complacent about the extraordinary healing relationship that we've been given with our God, expecting from Him rather than understanding that He owes us nothing and it's us who owe Him everything? Do we sometimes fall into a lifeless ingratitude 
as we perfunctorily receive the sacraments with no real thought for what Christ himself is providing us. Or maybe we ignore them altogether. Sometimes it seems our gratitude only goes so far. I'd offer to you that in a manner of speaking, we're all lepers. Back in the days when it couldn't be treated, leprosy was a disease, a disorder, if you will, that separated you from society and your loved ones. You just weren't the same. You were profoundly diminished when you had it. And like leprosy, it's our unconfessed sins, our spiritual disorder, that separates and isolates us from living fully in communion with our fellow Catholics. Just like those ancient poor souls, it can be the same for us who've been baptized into a new life in Christ and membership in his one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Folks, my friends, we are his church and each of us is an irreplaceable part of the very body of Christ. And our unconfessed sins cloud the windows of our soul and make it more difficult for the Holy Spirit's cleansing light and counsel to enter into us, and easier for Satan to further lull us into an increased complacency and ingratitude for the miracle that is our life in Christ. They make it harder for us to live fully as members of his body here on earth. We too are diminished. So what can we do? Jesus, our master, gives us the remedy today. Go show yourselves to the priests. He offers us the most precious sacrament of reconciliation. Just as those ancient lepers, ancient lepers went in pure faith, we modern day ones must do the same, opening ourselves up to the grace of God's merciful and healing sacrament of forgiveness. My friends, he offers it to us as pure gift at the hands of our priests. And then we too will be returned to full communion with our brothers and sisters and can come before his Eucharist in thanks and gratitude for the cleansing that he guarantees to us. We too can hear the words of Jesus. Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you.